I've heard some old timers say, it's the thing they don't want you talking about that you should be talking about. What it took to build this is something that can be very useful for all of mankind. Whether it's transportation in the automotive world or you're building home goods. It achieved 104.7 miles to the gallon and zero to 60 in 4.61 seconds. I originally built this car because I was so disgusted by the lies of American presidential politicians. I'll help our auto companies retool so that the fuel efficient cars of the future are built right here in America. And we are not by any means doing the best we can in America or any other country with cars, with transportation, with energy, with shipping, none of that. And I'm going to go so far as to say right now, I think our current presidential secretary of transportation is a lying puppet. But just remember America first. I want to make this place better, not just for the sake of the country and our people, but for the world. Because I know we still have smart people here, people that want to work, people that want to create, people that want to make it better, but they don't have the traction. They don't know the direction. Maybe we're not facilitating it, but I'm going to go on a journey to find out. I am back with the Omega car and I've got a plan. Now it's interesting because a few months back it achieved 104.7 miles to the gallon and zero to 60 in 4.61 seconds. Not, not crazy, right? That's 104.72 repeating miles to the gallon, not trying. You don't have to be a freak blocking highways to say you care about the environment. It doesn't mean squat. Just go out there and do something that's better. Yeah, I did it. Now that's an honest zero to 60 from zero and not a rollout like modern zero to 60 times are given. And that was awesome. That's everything I set out to do and more over a decade ago. And despite this car getting a lot of publicity when it was just a concept at times, I got nothing but crickets from the media, the mainstream media, the automotive media, everything. So something strange is going on and we're going to analyze it in this video, but also coming up this week, I've got a few other videos and I have a plan with this. So what's to come tomorrow? It's going to get dangerous. I'm going to run straight toward the fire because I'm going to talk about American industry and politics specifically. Now I know you hate politics. This is a car channel. Get to building Casey. Well, that's fine and dandy, but I originally built this car because I was so disgusted by the lies of American presidential politicians, period. I did this as a proof of concept to prove a point, which it did. And now is a time in America that I got to talk about it. And frankly, Genius Garage, that educational program I built over the last 11 years, I also did it because the failings of the American educational system, which I experienced way back in the 90s and 2000s, and is solely important right now based upon politics and finance, industry and education. So I'm going to talk about it and I am going to draw a hard line in the sand and I hope you all will listen because it's based upon over a decade of my observations from working very hard to do something real. But beyond that, I got another crazy video to tell you about. Um, I'm thinking Wednesday. Uh, let's see, about a month ago now, I was specifically targeted with what I can only see as an international trap, which they were trying to entrap me in what had to be either a big money laundering scheme, trafficking, or it was kidnapping for extortion. I don't know which one it is, but I was just clever enough to see what was happening and talked with some friends in interesting places. Um, so I have no idea if that relates in any way to what I'm doing with this or anything in general, or I was just the target for this, but I'm going to talk about it too, because if you ever find yourself out there in the world and something strange is happening, uh, I might as well share with you my experience because it may help you as well. Now, beyond that, what am I going to do with this thing B beyond just making the world freak out about politics and telling crazy stories? Well, the material, the design know-how, shall we say the technology, what it took to build this is something that can be very useful for all of mankind, whether it's transportation in the automotive world or you're building home goods. There's a myriad of ways to build things that are more sustainably recyclable, lower environmental impact, but maybe more importantly, cost effective and safe for the betterment of people and nations and hopefully most especially the United States. So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to try to find out 
where on earth, with whom, and how can I actually get people behind me? Investment, support, maybe to build a material science company, maybe to build new automotive parts, maybe to build cars, transportation, even home goods. Now, I live in the United States of America and I love this country. So America first, I'm gonna see what we can do here. But I have a, a great fear. I fear that America is very quickly becoming or is already a place where innovation no longer can happen. For a myriad of reasons. From regulation, to the screwed up nature of our laws, to finances, the economy, how things work, the messed up patent system, everything. I fear the United States is not that place. So on this journey, if I get that far, uh, you know what else I wanna do? I wanna see if the United States is in it. Where else in the world can you actually innovate and create something new for the betterment of people? Because if those places do exist, and I have a sneaking suspicion they do, I think the United States needs to wake up so that once again, we can move forward because I haven't seen it. So anyway, let's go into this shadow ban. Casey, why do you think you're so important that they should be talking about you? Well, uh, because they already did. Now, 11 years ago, I said in a video unrelated to this, I was literally just driving a 1932 Auburn Boatail Speedster across the country and doing old timey stuff and video recording because I thought that would be cool. Um, but I realized YouTube was way harder back then. <laughs> That's kind of like what I did way back then. And I said, sitting down at the Roanoke Transportation Museum in front of Norfolk and Western Class J484 locomotive to be specific and my Auburn, it will get over hundred miles to the gallon. It will do zero to 60 in under five seconds. Mark my words. And I took a puff of a cigar. I am designing a car and building a came with new manufacturing process that makes a sustainable, recyclable vehicle. It takes a small fraction of the energy it is to create. It's going to get over 100 miles to the gallon. It will do zero to 60 in under five seconds. Mark my words. That was 11 years ago. Five years ago on VinWiki, I said, I think it's reasonable to crack 100 miles to the gallon. Even if I went off half cocked to do something grand back then, this is worth doing. I do think it's reasonable to come close to or crack 100 miles to the gallon on this thing. Just straight internal combustion. You can easily make something that could be electric or it, you know, it could be natural gas powered, whatever the, the power plant is. So if you really want to think about the future, what does that look like? And it's interesting because three years ago on VinWiki to a few hundred thousand people, I said, I was afraid that no one would care. But one, I was, I was exhausted from the first year Genius Garage. I was exhausted from building that car. I was honestly afraid that if I finished it, even if it was fast and recyclable and, and got 100 miles of the gallon and was amazing, that no one would care. Well, at the time, that fear was unfounded. Because in 2022, I just looked this up, a quick search, Hot Cars wrote an article that said, here's why we all need the fuel efficient and recyclable Omega sports car. Again in 2022, EcoModder, smaller thing, wrote Casey Pucci's Omega sports car and covered it. But now we go back to 2020. Car Scoops, larger, says, the Omega car experimental concept wants to achieve 100 miles to the gallon and outrun a Viper. 2020, once again, this 95 octane says, the Omega car aims for 100 miles per gallon and Dodge Viper-like acceleration. 2020 again, Car Buzz, cool concept, will outmuscle Dodge Viper and get 100 miles to the gallon. 2020 again, Top Gear in Europe wrote about it. And then Grand Tour Nation in 2020 wrote, wild 100 miles per gallon sports car to rival Volkswagen XLI or one and Dodge Viper. That was all in 2020, all that coverage. But back then it was just an idea. It was just a concept. It was just a cute project that some YouTuber was working on. But now it did it the first time out with no extra tuning. Didn't even have the aerodynamic fairings on it. Just the first time out of the box, driving it. 104.7 miles to the gallon, just driving through the countryside, stop signs, etc. Not even highway. And with old tires, trying not to hurt it, I exactly matched the acceleration curve of 2019 C7 Corvette Grand Sport. Exactly. Beat this red Dodge Viper, which was my benchmark, by two tenths of a second to zero to 60, and missed the current Tesla Model 3 two-wheel drive, to be fair, by one one-hundredth of a second. I ran that car with a full charge and it got 4.60 seconds. This did 4.61. Now let's be honest, that's pretty much identical. <laughs> 
but nothing, no coverage. And I'm gonna be honest, some press releases and things went out, we set up and talked to people. Absolutely nothing. There was a little bit of a response I heard by, heard from. Two things that were said were, why didn't he partner with a manufacturer to do this? That's interesting, let's address it. And then the other thing that was said from the press was, diesel's dead. Wow. Let's talk about those two things. Diesel's dead, first and foremost. Okay, well, diesel fuel is used to power all of the commercial trucks in America, deliver all of our goods, basically. It's used to power all of our locomotives. They power the generators on them to, to create the electricity to drive the wheels. They're powered by diesel. All of the ships around the world, effectively, that are moving cargo are diesel. Jet fuel is not much different than diesel. It's largely the same thing. In fact, in a jet engine, you can run diesel to get away with it. Many military engines have it in the books to say what else you can run. Kerosene, diesel, and jet fuel are all darn near the same thing. So effectively, all of our jet aircraft, whether it's a military turbojet or it's a ducted fan jet on a commercial aircraft, same basic fuel. But the press said diesel is dead. Diesel's used out throughout Europe and diesel's at every gas pump in America, basically, not even including trucks. So what the heck is going on there? It's not dead. Not to mention the fact that diesel, we can build, make biodiesel. I can make biodiesel after the, uh, of the leftover materials from the meat industry. I can make biodiesel from the leftover oils from the winemaking industry, from farming, from agriculture, from our American fatty fast food fryers. I can make diesel and power this car and many like it with all of those things. So to say diesel is dead, is the mirrored opposite of the truth. It is both the most flexible and probably the most used fuel in the world. So what's going on with the media, I ask, once again? Let's go to that other one. Why didn't he pair with an automotive manufacturer? Let's all just be honest here. Why would a manufacturer, any automotive manufacturer, Fortune 100 company, whatnot, pair with a guy in a 1940s Liquid Quonset hut from Ohio regardless about how good he is at turning a wrench. Why? They wouldn't. The optics of it would break the narrative. The guy doesn't work for them, they don't want it, it'll make them look bad. Why is it that one guy goes out and builds something when manufacturers are not? CEOs and C-suite people, they're influenced and worked by also politicians. It would hurt the narrative. They're never gonna work with an individual. This isn't the 1950s. This isn't Carol Shelby building stuff and working for Ford to go beat Ferrari. We live in a much different and scarier world. And we are not, by any means, doing the best we can in America or any other country with cars, with transportation, with energy, with shipping, none of that. And I'm gonna go so far as to say right now, I think our current presidential secretary of transportation is a lying puppet. No manufacturer is going to pair or work with an individual, no matter what you have. But the media, it was nothing but crickets, even though they talked about it years ago. Why? Well, I've heard some old timers say, it's the thing they don't want you talking about that you should be talking about. Let's be honest, the word narrative is a very popular world, word in the world right now. You have to bang your drum of your narrative, your truth. We have multiple fighting political parties. We have multiple competing nations in the world with different ideas. But did you notice in all the things I just said, we don't have smart individuals sticking up for the betterment of people, the world, the environment? No. We have competing corporations, businesses, nations, politicians. Yeah, no, they're not going to talk about it because I break their narrative. Good. That was the whole point. I started this because a presidential candidate, who frankly became president some time ago, 
lied to us all. Everybody was very excited about this person at the time, but I thought he was full of crap, and it bugged me. And then I watched what happened over the next few years, and the opposite of what he said, and he got everyone in the world excited for, is what actually happened. So I went out and did it. So that's what I'm going to do. Tomorrow's video, I'm going to take a hard stand and tell you everything I've learned about American politics and what I think specifically relating to policies and this upcoming election in one month and this car. And yes, this is the hill I will die on because I'm that sure of it with transportation, cars, industry, policy, education, finance, etc. The next day, I'm going to tell you about this crazy entrapment thing that happened. I don't know why in the hell I was targeted, but it was real. Uh, it was a little nerving and surprising, and I think it's a good story because if anything like this happens to any of you, you might be better aware of what's to come. And then after that, I don't know, if I'm still standing, I'm going to go out and see where I can find a place to do anything innovative, whether that's in the United States or elsewhere, and we're going to talk about it. But just remember, America first. I want to make this place better, not just for the sake of the country and our people, but for the world. Because I know we still have smart people here, people that want to work, people that want to create, people that want to make it better, but they don't have the traction. They don't know the direction. And maybe we're not facilitating it, but I'm going to go on a journey to find out. Now, as far as the car goes and the prototype, well, it's a prototype. And frankly, it has proved its point. I may have a little bit of fun with it. And frankly, I, frankly, I'd like to clean it up and paint it, make it look really nice so I can drive it here and there. I think, frankly, it'll do better than 104.7 miles a gallon because that was the first try. It'd be fun to get 128 miles to the gallon. Uh, because that would be exactly one ounce per mile. Um, also, my apologies for not converting this to metric. Um, yes, that's a more sensible system, but I do live in America. So you guys do the conversion. Um, it did quite well. Uh, and, um, and that's kind of that. So why am I going to move on? I want to do other designs of cars, home goods, and see if there's any opportunity to create businesses and new designs. See what happens out there in the political world. See if any of this matters. But the one thing I'm going to tell you all is, I'm never going to quit. And I'm never going to stop moving forward, creating things for the betterment of the future. And if I tell you something, even if it's controversial, you don't believe it, I promise you, it's based upon years and years and years and years of observation. Because to create a car from the ground up like this that did exactly what I said it would do based upon what was in my head the first time out, as well as create an educational program that picks up the slack from academia to industry and gives the top engineering students in the country the opportunity to shine where they're going to get hired from everywhere from Tesla and Palo Alto to Lockheed Martin requires me understanding systems and how they work together very well. Our civilization, how people interact, politics, industry, they're just systems. And you can see the mechanics of them and you can see how they work. You can watch the chess game and figure out the strategy, regardless of what the chess player says. So let's not focus on what they say. Let's focus on how they move their pieces. And I'll tell you what I think they're doing. See you next time.